Hello everybody. Today we will discuss uh, problems from the first uh, tour of US Olympic Olympiad year 2008 F equal MA. There are as usual uh, 25 problems uh, for which uh, you will get uh, 75 minutes and uh, you need to solve as much as possible problems. So, again, uh, we need to uh, emphasize that uh, first uh, you have to try to solve easiest problems and uh, after that, when you solve easy problem, go ahead and uh, try to solve a more difficult problem. So, first problem. A bird flying in a straight line, initially at uh, 10 meters per second uniformly increases its speed to 18 meters per second while covering a distance of uh, 40 meters what is the magnitude of the acceleration of the bird solution uh, this is typical uh, kinematic problem to use uh, regular kinematic uh, equations for motion with acceleration with constant acceleration uh, there are uh, four equations which we use for uh, such kinematic problems. First uh, three, they uh, include time. And uh, equation number four, it's not, it's without time, which is uh, connecting uh, initial and final speed, uh, distance and uh, acceleration. And uh, this uh, equation in the uh, form of uh, acceleration, to find acceleration, looks like this. Here uh, we, we have uh, such uh, notation. We have uh, final speed uh, V2 equal 18 meters per second. Initial speed is uh, 10 meters per second. And the distance is uh, 40 meters. And this is our uh, kinematic, uh, our kinematic uh, relation between all these things. So this is how to find, to calculate what is the acceleration. Now we can uh, input uh, numbers. And this is a solution. We have uh, finally uh, 2.8 meters per second square. Of course this is uh, d uh, the answer. Problem number two. A cockroach is uh, crawling along the walls inside the cubic cubical room that has an edge uh, length of three meters. If the cockroach starts from the back lower left hand corner of the cube and finishes at the front upper right hand corner, what is the magnitude of the displacement of the cockroach? Solution. This is a pure a geometrical problem. We have to find total displacement, not total uh, path of travel, not total distance. So we just need to find uh, what is the uh, straight line uh, length between the uh, initial position and final position. If uh, initial position is uh, 0, 0, 0 in the 3D, so the uh, final position is uh, x equal 3, y equal 3, and z equal 3. So, which uh, give us... Uh, so, we have uh, d square equal x square plus y square plus uh, z square. Uh, it means that d equal 3 root over 2 uh, over 3. So the answer is uh, 3 root 3, which is uh, C, correct answer. Problem number 3. The position versus time graph for an object moving in a straight line is shown here. What is the instantaneous velocity at time t equal 2 seconds? 
uh, we know that uh, instantaneous uh, velocity measured as a tangent line uh, in graph uh, position versus time. But here we have uh, this uh, graph uh, exactly straight line. So it means that uh, velocity will be the same in any point. So we can just uh, use uh, next equation to find what is the slope. So here we can count uh, slope from uh, point 2 seconds and here we have uh, displacement is 0 and in time 0 seconds we have displacement 4 meters. So the formula is uh, dx over dt equal 0 minus 4 over 2 seconds which is uh, negative 2. So this is the answer. Correct answer is uh, negative 2 meters per second. Problem number 4. The information below is for the next two problems. Shown below is the velocity versus time graph for a toy car moving along a straight line. What is the maximum displacement from start for the toy car? As uh, we can see on this graph, uh, when we have a uh, graph uh, velocity versus time, we can find what is a uh, total displacement uh, using uh, calculation of area under the graph. If uh, velocity is positive, uh, area is positive. If uh, velocity is negative, it means that uh, area is negative. So if we see, uh, if we want to find uh, where, where is the maximum displacement, we need to uh, move till uh, velocity is positive. So we will move till point, uh, 2.5 seconds. And we have to find what is the area under this graph from 0 to 2.5 seconds. Let's count it. From 0 to 1, that will be 2 and 4, that's uh, half uh, average of this is 3, so it's total 3 here. From 1 to 1 and a half, we have 0 0.5 multiplied by 4, which is 2. So here we have 3 and here we have 2, total is 5. And last is triangle from 1.5 till 2.5 so base is 1 and the height is 4 so total area for this triangle is 2 so total is 3 plus 2 plus 2 which is 7 correct answer is D 7 meters problem 5 which of the following acceleration versus time graphs most closely represents the acceleration of the toy car. Let's uh, check this graph. Uh, velocity versus time. Acceleration is a slope. So it means that from uh, 0 to 1 seconds we have positive acceleration 2. From 1 to 1 1.5 we have a 0 acceleration. And from one and a half till three, we have negative acceleration, negative four. So here we have uh, positive two, zero, negative four. Let's check all these five graphs. Uh, graph A. We have positive here, from zero to one. We have zero from one to one and a half. But here we have positive. So it's no good. We're supposed to have a negative. So A is no good. B. We have positive from 0 to 1 and 0 from 1 to 1 and a half. And we have negative uh, there. But the difference is that here we have positive 2 and negative 4. And here we have positive but negative twice less than positive. So it's no good. It's supposed to be uh, 
negative uh, twice greater by absolute value. Let's uh, check C. We have a uh, first thing positive. After that we have zero. And after that we have negative. And this negative is uh, twice greater than this positive. So that's a good, that's a good uh, solution. Probably C is a good uh, solution. Uh, let's check uh, two others. D, we have a uh, good uh, from 0 to 1, that's positive. We have 0 from 1 to 1 and a half. And we have uh, from 1 and a half to 2 and a half. It's again good, but last thing, last uh, from 0 0.5 till 3, we have positive. But it's supposed to be still negative. So it's no good. And E is no good because uh, from 1 to 1 and a half it's not 0, which is no good. So that's it. C is correct, correct answer. Problem number 6. A cannon fires projectiles on a flat range at a fixed speed but with a variable angle. The maximum range of the cannon is uh, big L. What is the range of the cannon when it fires at angle pi over 6 above the horizontal? Ignore I resistance. Solution. We know that the uh, range for cannon equal like this d equal v square over g multiplied by double angle theta. Uh, maximum range we have uh, when theta equal pi over 4, so it means that sine equal 1. And uh, what happens when we have uh, angle pi over 6? In that case, we have d equal uh, v square over g multiplied by sine pi over 3, which is root 3 over 2. So it means that total solution will be root 3 over 2 big L which is a correct answer problem number 4 the information below is for the next two problems shown below is the velocity versus time graph for a toy car moving along a straight line what is the maximum displacement from start for the toy car as uh, we can see on this graph, uh, when we have a uh, graph uh, velocity versus time, we can find what is a total displacement uh, using uh, calculation of area under the graph. If uh, velocity is positive, uh, area is positive. If uh, velocity is negative, it means that uh, area is negative so if we see uh, if we want to find that where, where is the maximum displacement we need to uh, move till uh, velocity is positive so we will move till point uh, 2.5 seconds and we have to find what is the area under this graph from 0 to 2.5 seconds let's count it from 0 to 1, that will be 2 and 4, that's a uh, half uh, average of this is 3, so it's total 3 here. From 1 to 1 and a half, we have 0 0.5 multiplied by 4, which is 2. So here we have 3 and here we have 2, total is 5. And last is triangle from 1.5 till 2.5 so base is 1 and the height is 4 so total area for this triangle is 2 so total is 3 plus 2 plus 2 which is 7 correct answer is D 7 meters problem 5 which of the following acceleration versus time graphs most closely 
represents the acceleration of the toy car. Let's uh, check this graph. Uh, velocity versus time. Acceleration is a slope. So it means that from uh, 0 to 1 seconds we have positive acceleration 2. From 1 to 1 1.5 we have a 0 acceleration. And from 1 1.5 till 3 we have negative acceleration negative 4. So here we have uh, positive 2, 0, negative 4. Let's check all these five graphs. Uh, graph A. We have positive here from 0 to 1. We have 0 from 1 to 1 and a half. But here we have positive. So it's no good. We're supposed to have a negative. So A is no good. B. We have positive from 0 to 1 and 0 from 1 to 1 and a half. And we have negative uh, there. But the difference is that here we have positive 2 and negative 4. And here we have positive but negative twice less than positive. So it's no good. It's supposed to be uh, negative uh, twice greater by absolute value. Let's uh, check C. We have uh, first thing positive, after that we have zero, and after that we have negative, and this negative is uh, twice greater than this positive. So that's a good, that's a good uh, solution. Probably C it's a good uh, solution. Uh, let's check uh, two others. D. We have a uh, good uh, from 0 to 1, that's positive. We have 0 from 1 to 1 and a half. And we have uh, from 1 and a half to 2 and a half. It's again good, but last thing, last uh, from 0 0.5 till 3. We have positive, but it's supposed to be still negative, so it's no good. And E is no good because uh, from 1 to 1 and a half it's not 0, which is no good. So that's it. C is correct, correct answer. Problem number 6. A cannon fires projectiles on a flat range at a fixed speed but with a variable angle. The maximum range of the cannon is uh, big L. What is the range of the cannon when it fires at angle pi over 6 above the horizontal? Ignore I resistance. Solution. We know that the uh, range for cannon equal like this d equal v square over g multiplied by double angle theta. Uh, maximum range we have uh, when theta equal pi over 4. So it means that sine equal 1. And uh, what happens when we have uh, angle pi over 6? In that case we have d equal uh, v square over g multiplied by sine pi over 3, which is root 3 over 2. So it means that total solution will be root 3 over 2, big L, which is A, correct answer. Problem number 10. The following information applies to the next two problems. An experiment consists of pulling a heavy wooden block across a level surface with the spring force matter. The constant force for each try is recorded, as is the acceleration of the block. The data are shown below. Which is the best value for the mass of the block? So first of all we can uh, write here the equation for motion. This is our equation. 
uh, mass multiplied by acceleration equal force of uh, the spring uh, minus uh, force of friction, which is uh, mu mg. If we look at this uh, equation and uh, look at this uh, representing uh, data, we can see that uh, uh, force is a function of acceleration and uh, according to this equation it must be straight line and uh, we can uh, draw a picture from this uh, picture we can see that uh, mass could be defined as a slope of this graph so delta f divided by delta a and uh, the best uh, way to choose uh, this uh, uh, delta is to take uh, uh, furthest points like this one and this one and uh, this one and this one so we can write this immediately we choose uh, points uh, 5.05 .05 minus uh, 3.05 .05 divided by 0. Uh, 495 minus 0 0.95 0 9 so this is our answer we have mass equal 5 kilogram which is a b answer problem number 11 we have the same setup as for previous problem number 10 but the question is uh, this which is the best uh, value of the coefficient of uh, friction between the block and the surface. Again, uh, to solve this uh, problem, uh, we can use uh, this uh, equation m equal f minus mu mg and now we already counted uh, what is the uh, mass. It's 5 kilograms. So we can use uh, all data which we already have and this is our calculations. So here we use uh, force 5.05 .05 and acceleration 0 0.495. Put it in this formula. And uh, finally we found that uh, mu equal 0 0.05. That's answer A. Problem number 12. A uniform disk rotates at a fixed angular velocity on an axis uh, through its center normal to the plane of the disk and has kinetic energy E. If the same disk rotates at the same angular velocity about an axis on the edge of the disk still normal to the plane of the disk, what is its uh, kinetic energy? So first uh, here let's uh, uh, draw the picture. If our disk uh, rotates around the uh, center, uh, point O, we have a uh, moment of inertia at this disk equal to I0, which is uh, one half m r square. This is formula for uh, uniform disk. But uh, from other hand, if uh, this disk rotate around a point on a, some kind of distance d from the center of this disk center of mass of this disk uh, we use a so-called parallel axis theorem which uh, state that uh, moment of inertia equal to uh, moment of inertia around center of mass plus uh, m d square where d is a uh, distance uh, between uh, center of mass and the uh, point of rotation. In our case, uh, distance is equal exactly radius, and uh, it means that we have we just uh, triple moment of inertia. And last point, and kinetic energy for rotation. The formula is: we see that energy, kinetic energy, proportional to moment of inertia. If we triple moment of inertia and uh, leave the same angular velocity, we will triple our energy. It means that uh, the answer is D, 3E. Problem number 16. 
A massless spring with a spring constant K is vertically mounted so that the bottom end is firmly attached to the ground and the top end free. A ball with mass M falls vertically down on the top end of the spring, becoming attached so that the ball oscillates vertically on the spring. What equation describes the acceleration of the ball when it is at height y above the original position of the top end of the spring? Let down be negative and the neglect resistance. G is the magnitude of the acceleration of free fall. So, uh, first let's uh, draw the picture for this process. Uh, initially, a uh, spring is uh, in uh, neutral position and uh, after uh, mass is uh, attached to the uh, platform, it starts to oscillate in the position uh, y above the neutral. Uh, we can figure uh, which forces acting on this uh, mass. So first uh, force is from spring. It's equal to negative uh, ky because y is positive and uh, it's a regular formula for force with the hooking spring. And other force is uh, mg which is uh, going to negative 2. So we can write this equation. So that's the equation for uh, motion for this uh, ball. And now we can find uh, what is the acceleration. This is the final uh, equation for acceleration. So we can see that uh, it's exactly E correct answer. Problem 17. A mass M is uh, resting at equilibrium suspended from a vertical spring of uh, natural length L and the spring constant K inside a box as shown. The box uh, begins accelerating upward with the acceleration A. How much closer does the equilibrium position of the mass move to the bottom of the box? So, first of all, uh, we can uh, write equation for how to find what is the displacement of uh, mass uh, from initial uh, equilibrium to equilibrium with the mass attached to the spring. mg equal negative kx1. If we start to move this box uh, upward with acceleration a, its uh, best way to do is uh, to move it to the new uh, frame of reference, which is going uh, with acceleration a upward. In this frame, we, we have uh, additional fictional force, uh, like uh, additional force of gravity acting on all bodies. So it means that uh, we can replace uh, gravity acceleration g with the gravity acceleration g plus a. In that case, a new uh, equation for the equilibrium position will be this one. So now let's uh, subtract from this equation, this equation. Equation which uh, describe what is the displacement of our new uh, equilibrium position. That's uh, x2 minus x1. x2 minus x1 equal negative ma over k. So, and uh, the question was uh, what is the new position down to the bottom? So, it means that uh, answer is m a over k, which is e. Problem number 18. A uniform circular ring of radius big R is fixed in a place. A particle is uh, placed on the axis of the ring at a distance much greater than R and allow it to fall toward the ring under the influence of uh, the ring's gravity. The particle achieves a maximum speed v. The ring is uh, replaced with uh, one of the same linear mass density but radius 2r and the experiment is repeated. 
what is the new maximum speed of the particle. So, uh, first of all, uh, if we are very far from ring, we can uh, make potential energy equal zero in the infinity. And now, uh, let's uh, calculate what is the potential energy in the center of the ring when particle achieves it. Uh, that's uh, obviously be this expression potential energy equal negative g uh, mass of the ring multiplied by mass of the body and divided by radius because uh, all uh, mass of the ring has a distance uh, r from the center of this uh, ring uh, it means that uh, this uh, particle will get kinetic energy equal to difference of potential energy k equal positive uh, expression for uh, potential energy now let's see what happen if uh, we have double ring with the same uh, linear density and uh, repeat this experiment if we uh, double linear density it means that uh, total mass of the ring uh, will double but uh, the distance uh, from the center of the uh, ring will double too so it means that for expression for potential energy will be like this we double mass we double uh, radius they will cancel each other and the uh, potential energy will be the same it means that uh, particle will get the same kinetic energy uh, which means that uh, speed, uh, maximum speed will, will be the same. So, correct answer is C. Problem 19. A car has an engine which delivers a constant power. It accelerates from rest at time t equal 0, and at time t equal t0, its acceleration is uh, a0. What is uh, its acceleration at time equal to t0? Ignore any loss due to friction. So first of all, uh, let's uh, write the expression for power. We know that power equal to f applied force multiplied by speed, which means uh, that for a regular car, that will be mass multiplied by acceleration and by speed. Uh, from other hand, we know that if uh, we don't lose any uh, power, all power going to kinetic energy, uh, because we have uh, constant power, our kinetic energy increases linearly. So this is the expression for kinetic energy. This expression is uh, good for time equal to zero. If we have uh, time equal to t0, we have, uh, we have to double our kinetic energy, which is this one. And uh, from here we can immediately say speed equal uh, root 2 uh, v0. This is how our speed increases with time. And uh, now, if we look at this expression, if we increase uh, v in a root two times it means that our acceleration will, will decrease on the same value so finally we have acceleration a equal one over root two a zero this is the b answer problem number 20 the young's modulus e of a material measures how stiff it is the larger the value of E, the more stiff the material. Consider a solid rectangular steel beam, which is uh, anchored horizontally to the wall at one end and allowed to deflect under its own weight. The beam has a length L, vertical thickness H, width W, mass density Rho, and the uh, Young's modulus E. The acceleration due to gravity is G. What is the distance through which the other end moves? Beam sagging. Hint. 
you are expected to solve this uh, problem by eliminating implausible answers all of the choices are dimensionally correct solution it, uh, usually such uh, problems in uh, US Olympia they are connected to dimensional analysis but here uh, they already told that uh, dimensions are all correct so we just need to uh, make uh, quality analysis which uh, parameters uh, has uh, ki what kind of influence on this uh, deflect deflecting let's start with this uh, table we will check for each uh, parameter how it will uh, affect this uh, deflection and uh, exclude what, what can we exclude so first of all uh, Young modulus it's uh, how st stiff it is it means that how difficult uh, under the gravity for example to compress or to stretch our uh, beam so let's see uh, first A uh, if we increase uh, E uh, this expression decreased so that's possibility we can mention it here a next one is b same thing we increase e uh, deflection decreasing so b is correct c is not correct because it's not including e but it must so c is no good d same thing t is good because uh, uh, for same reason we will increase e uh, deflection decreasing d and e no good we increase e and deflection increasing which is not correct let's talk about l parameter l if we enlarge parameter l uh, for sure this uh, deflection will increase so this is good for choice A for uh, choice B for choice C uh, for choice D and uh, for choice uh, E oh I'm sorry it's not including in B so B is no good let's talk about uh, parameter H height. if we increase H uh, we increase uh, th uh, vertical thickness it means that uh, this uh, deflection will decrease A is no good B is uh, no good C is no good only D and E good D and E uh, W is not included and uh, it's obviously has no influence and uh, rho g let's check rho g rho g uh, if we increase rho and g deflection will increase so it means that a is good b is good c no good d good and e is not good so analyzing all these answers we can see that only D is correct it's included in all of them so D is correct answer problem number 21 consider a particle at rest which may decay into two daughter particles or into three daughter particles which of the following is uh, true in the two-body case but 
falls in the three-body case. There are no external forces. A. Velocity vectors of the dotted particle must lie in a single plane. For two uh, particles cases, uh, of course, we have this is true because uh, both uh, velocities they lie in a single line due to momentum conservation. For three particles, suppose that uh, two particles uh, lie in uh, one plane and the third particle uh, momentum do not belong this plane. It means that we have uh, some part of uh, momentum which not belong to this plane. It means that uh, total momentum is not, not zero, which is not correct. So, it means that uh, all three vectors must uh, belong to one plane. It means that A is not correct answer. B. <coughs> Given the total kinetic energy of the system and the mass of each dot of particle, it is possible to determine the speed of each dot of particles. Let's see. For two particles, we have uh, these uh, two equations. We have uh, total kinetic energy and we have uh, zero momentum. And we have uh, both masses. It means that we have uh, two variables v1 and v2 and two equations so it means that that's correct we can calculate what is uh, speed of each particle but consider three particles cases now we have uh, one equation for uh, energy and uh, three equations for momentum because uh, it's vector form three in 3D but uh, we have uh, for each uh, velocity we have three dimensions so we have nine dimensions for velocities and only two equations so it's not solvable it's no good it means that uh, B is correct answer Let's examine C. Given the speeds of all but one dot particle, it is possible to determine the speed of the remaining particle. It's not correct because uh, if we have speed of one particle and we don't know what are masses, so it means that we cannot use uh, this uh, momentum zero momentum to determine what is the speed of uh, other particle. And same thing for three uh, particles. Again, if we have a speed of one particle and speed of other particle and we don't have any masses, we cannot calculate third speed. And D, the total momentum of the dot particles is zero. Of course, that's correct for a case of two particles and for three particles. So it means that it's not good answer. So good answer, uh, remaining good answer is B. Problem number 22. A bullet of mass M1 strikes a pendulum of uh, mass M2 suspended from a pivot by a string of length big L with a horizontal velocity V0. The collision is uh, perfectly inelastic and the bullet sticks to the bulb. Find the minimum velocity V0 such that the bob with the bullet inside completes a circular vertical loop. So first of all, uh, we can draw the picture of this uh, scenario. On this picture, uh, first uh, bullet uh, stick this uh, pendulum and getting a new velocity V1. After that, it start to rotate till uh, highest point, where it's getting uh, speed V2. 
and uh, the best way to do this problem is to probably to go backward so first uh, we have to find uh, how, how much is uh, the minimum velocity v2 we can get here not not to fail down because we have string not a rod so it means that uh, it's not enough to have uh, zero velocity here this uh, velocity must uh, uh, be such a way that uh, there is uh, no negative tension is, uh, in this uh, string so critical value for this string is zero so we can uh, write equation for this uh, motion on the top so we have uh, ma equal mg plus uh, tension where m is a uh, total mass of uh, bob and uh, bullet e for in a critical scenario tension must be equal zero it means that uh, acceleration in the highest point is g but we know that uh, if a uh, body uh, going by circular orbit uh, acceleration is a uh, centripetal acceleration and uh, we can uh, calculate this uh, acceleration by this way so this is the uh, connection between uh, velocity in highest point and the uh, acceleration so next step if we know what is the uh, velocity in the highest point we can find uh, what is the uh, velocity in the lowest point right after collision so we have to f uh, find uh, what is the uh, velocity v1 uh, for that uh, we can use uh, energy conservation it means that uh, kinetic energy in highest point uh, plus uh, potential energy compared to lowest point that's equal to kinetic energy in the lowest point so here uh, we can use uh, this expression uh, substantiated here and find that v1 square equal 5 gl and the last uh, step is uh, to find what is uh, initial velocity v0 because here we have uh, absolutely an inelastic collision we have uh, momentum conservation here and uh, we can write this equation this is the equation for momentum conservation and uh, from here uh, using this expression for v1 uh, we can find finally that uh, v0 must be equal to this expression so this is correct answer v0 equal m1 plus m2 multiplied by a root from 5lg and uh, everything divided by m1 which is e correct answer problem number 23 consider two uniform spherical planets of equal density but uh, unequal radius which of the following quantities is the same for both planets uh, a escape velocity from the planet's surface let's see uh, first of all we need to count what is the uh, mass of this planet uh, using uh, equation n equal volume multiplied by uh, density after that we can find the force of gravity right on the surface of this planet so this force equal this expression over m small is the uh, mass of our object from this uh, formula we can find what is the acceleration of free fall right on the surface of this planet as we can see uh, this uh, acceleration proportional to radius for the same density and uh, after that we can find uh, what is the escape velocity uh, from the surface surface of planet using this equation we know that escape velocity equal root uh, 2gr 
or after this substantination we can uh, take uh, this uh, formula here we see that escape velocity proportional to radius so it means that uh, it's not the same for both planets with a different radii part b the acceleration due to gravity at the planet's surface we see that this is not true again because this acceleration proportional to radius Let's uh, check uh, part C, the orbital period of a satellite in a circular orbit just uh, above the planet's uh, surface. We know that uh, orbital uh, speed uh, right uh, above the surface we can count using this formula. And the uh, period we can find that's a distance over speed, 2 pi r over speed. And uh, we see that uh, using uh, this uh, substantination, we can find that uh, this speed again proportional to uh, radius. So ra radii are cancelled. And finally, we have same period for any planet with the same density. So C is true. D. The orbital period of a satellite in a circular orbit at a given distance from the planet's center. Uh, this is not true because uh, each planet has a different mass and on the same distance, uh, if a mass is uh, higher, uh, we have a higher orbital velocity. That's it. In this problem we have C correct answer. Problem number 24. A ball is launched upward from the ground at an initial vertical speed of V0 and begins bouncing vertically. Every time it rebounds, it loses a proportion of the magnitude of its velocity due to the inelastic nature of the collision, such that if the speed just before hitting the ground on a bounce is V, then the speed just after the bounce is rv, where r is less than 1, a constant. Calculate the total length of time that the ball remains bouncing, assuming that any time associated with the actual contact of the ball with the ground is neglectable. So first of all, let's uh, count uh, what is the uh, time for travel after the first Launch. That will be a total change of velocity uh, over g, which is uh, 2 v0 over g. After that, the uh, ball loses uh, proportion r of its uh, uh, velocity, and uh, now we have a time for next uh, travel is uh, t1. We see that this uh, t1. Uh, is r time less than t0 and the same thing happened after every rebound so we have for each uh, ti time for number i rebound we have uh, time so t uh, i equal t0 multiplied by r power i now we can count what is total time just summarizing all these times. So we have total time as the sum of all times. And uh, finally we have geometric progression. And we can count what is the result for geometric progression. And this is the uh, our answer. So, and the correct answer will be 2v0 over g multiplied by 1 over 1 minus r, which is the correct answer a. Problem number 25. Two satellites are launched at a distance A from a planet of neglectable radius. Both satellites are launched in the tangential direction. The first satellite launches correctly at speed V0 and enters a circular orbit. The second satellite, however, is launched at a speed of one-half V0. 
what is the minimum distance between the second satellite and the planet over the course of its orbit. So first uh, let's uh, draw the picture. So here we have uh, first satellites going uh, with a speed V0 by uh, circular orbit radius A. And the second satellite going with a tangential speed V1 equal one half V0 uh, with a distance A from, same distance A from the, uh, this uh, planet. But after that, uh, going to closest point at uh, distance B from uh, opposite uh, side of this uh, planet. So we have to count uh, what is uh, B compared to A. This uh, problem uh, looks like uh, complicated uh, if we do it uh, straight away. So we can use uh, energy conservation, momentum conservation use all these equations and uh, finally can find the right result. But this is the uh, long way. Uh, definitely we have here a shortcut and I can explain you this way. So first of all, uh, how to count what is total energy for satellite on orbit. For circular orbit, that's a easy way. Uh, we can count it using formula uh, potential energy plus kinetic energy. For circular orbit we have uh, this expression. Uh, if uh, this is uh, potential energy uh, negative, we have uh, kinetic energy exactly equal half of, uh, half of uh, potential energy but with a positive sign of course. And finally we have this expression negative gm m over 2a where a is a radius but uh, I can tell that uh, this formula is good only, not only for circular orbits but uh, also for elliptical any elliptical orbit if we take a as a uh, uh, half of a big uh, semi-axis of uh, ellipses let's say like this uh, small ellipse and uh, we can use this knowledge uh, if this is energy for the first uh, satellite uh, we can count uh, what is uh, total energy for second satellite that will be this expression uh, we have uh, potential energy in this point is the same uh, negative gmm over a but uh, kinetic energy uh, four times less than kinetic energy of the first satellite because uh, speed is uh, twice less. So finally we have uh, this expression for uh, total energy for the second satellite which is uh, negative G 7 mm over 8 A. This is from one hand. But uh, from the other hand we know that this uh, energy equal this expression. It's the same like uh, this expression but for elliptical orbit. And now uh, we can just equalize uh, this part and this part. Now after uh, after subtractions uh, we have and finally we can find that uh, B just equal 1 over 7A our uh, original radius. So that's the answer E. Again we here we used a special shortcut and uh, probably this is good way to solve such kind of problems because there are not much time for big uh, calculations.